Greetings, Gino here. Welcome to the One Night in Karazhan card review part 2. In part 1, we have reviewed the class cards, and this time we're going through the remaining neutral cards. So let's jump right in. Runic Egg 1 Manor 0 2 Death Rattle Draw card. I immediately think of the Loot Hoarder and the Novice Engineer, which all of them also give you a card. But after thinking of thinking for a while, Rune A isn't as viable as Loot Hoarder and Novice Engineer because well Loot Hoarder it's a death rattle card so you can trade Loot Hoarder into their minion so that you can trigger the death rattle but for Runic A the attack power is zero so that means you cannot suicide this card. So I don't think like for example Freeze Mage would play a card like Rune A. It's even though you can pain it down, it still takes you to pain. So I don't think it's it's good enough. Arcane Anomaly. One mana to one. Whenever you cast a spell, it gives this minion plus one health. Well, how good is this card? It's a one mana card so that you want to play this in tempo decks. You, you want to play minions in tempo decks, but not spells. Well, there are some spells that also give you board presence such as Pharaoh Spirit and Animal Companion. They're both 3 mana. So if you play Arcane Anomaly turn 1 and turn 2 you can coin and play Animal Companion and then your Arcane Anomaly gets to 3 health. How good is this? I still don't think this is good enough. A 2-3 on the board and a random Animal Companion on the board, maybe a Leoc a 2-4, maybe a 4-4, well, this is the perfect case, right? You you have the coin, uh, you have Akin normally on turn 1, you have Animal Companion on turn 2, so this is already the perfect case, but without Animal Companion, as I said, you mostly have some kind of low, lower drops, for example, 1 drop and 2 drop, on the average case, you might have a coin, so your arcane anomaly may get up to 2 health, but this is not enough. 2 health doesn't help you trade into anything. At its best, you can only trade a 1 2, which is not common in the meta. I don't think this card is good. Pompous Thespian 2 mana 3 2 taunt. Uh, I immediately think of the sparring partner which is also a 2 mana 3 2 taunt additionally it has a battle cry give minion taunt but this is well you may argue it is better or worse but i think they are kind of identical so we're not playing sparring partner at any deck and uh, an early minion with taunt doesn't help you there's no valuable one drop or two drop you have to protect with taunt so the value of taunts is not that high so i don't think this card uh, is any good right next we have nether spite nether spite historian two mana one three battle cry if you holding if you're holding a dragon discover a dragon this can be obviously played in dragon decks and i think dragon decks need these these kinds of cards because it's a discover card you can have Early Dragon, where you might want to play it on turn 4, a Twilight Guardian is good enough. Or it might you might want to get something bigger later turn, such as a Nefarian. Uh, I think Discover is really good. This, uh, well, the stat is a little bit low, but I still think this card has a lot of potential. Also, you can use this card alongside with Brand so that you can get two cards instead of one. And it gives you more gas to um, sustain the battle. Next we have Subot. Battlecry give a random friendly beast dragon. Uh, and Murloc plus one plus one. This is a three cost card with three three Mac. <coughs> it's a Mac. And uh, how good is this card? You have to like it's Judging by its stats, is below the average, so the battle cry needs to hit at least one minion. Which is okay, but you have to play Beast 
dragon and murloc in your deck well is there any good beast good dragon or murloc well in sue i don't think so i don't want to sacrifice that much to uh try to play play a beast or dragon or murloc in my zoo deck to play the zubot and and after playing turn one one drop turn two two drop your opponent is likely to clear your board as best as he can right do you want to play a naked three three on turn three i don't think so uh M gang boss or dark shard councilman is much better than this so you're not gonna play this in sue i believe and what about other decks? Can you play this in Hunter? Maybe. Because Hunter, you already have a lot of beasts. So, are you gonna put another dragon inside? I don't think so. Are you gonna put a Murloc into the Hunter track? I don't think so. So, this card is at best a 3 3 plus 1 plus 1 battle cry. I would rather play something else, right? So I don't think this card is gonna playable. I think this card is well it's similar to Shadow Sun Cleric. It's a 3 mana 3-2. Three, it was nerfed before, it was 3 mana 3-3 three, three, give a friendly minion plus one plus one. But this card is used to play in Sue. And at that time Sue doesn't have to play doesn't have to play a beast, doesn't have to play Murloc. And Shadow Sun Cleric is much more flexible than Izuba. That's why Shadow Sun Cleric is still good today, but people aren't using it because of the meta. So there are better cards, there are better choice. So Zuba, I don't think Zuba is gonna see play. Next we have Violet Illusionist. 3 mana 4 3 during your turn your hero is immune. I've talked about this card when I um when I reviewed the the new warrior weapon card which is the fool's bane a five mana three four violet lotion is identical to healing so when you use a weapon you don't take damage so it's identical to healing so when you use fool's bane you're gonna attack multiple times maybe you want to kill an azure drake so you equip this weapon, you attack twice. Uh, without Violet Illusionist, you're taking 8 damage to face. So with Violet Illusionist, you're taking, you're taking no damage. So that's good. Uh, restore 8 health, gain 8 armor. Some people might argue that Pit Lord is going to be viable after playing Violet Illusionist. If you're not playing these cards together, you're playing uh, Violet Illusionist, 3 mana 4 3, that's below average and that doesn't give you any advantage. You might play Pet Lore for 4 mana, four, uh, 5 6, still 5 damage to your hero. Early in the game it may be okay, but later on if you top deck this, it's gonna kill you, right? So no one plays, no one plays Pet Lord in any decks nowadays. Even when you can combo these cards together, Violet Teacher, Illusionist, and Pit Lore, it's a 7 mana, 143 on the board and 156 on the board. It's super slow. You can do things like killing your opponent on turn 7 or maybe playing a bigger minion on turn 7. You don't have to wait for these combo. Playing just minion on turn 7, it's super slow and your opponent might kill you on the next turn. So I don't think this is good enough. Next we have Pantry Spider, 3 mana 1-3 battle cry summon a 1-3 spider. I think both of them are beast. And this is quite like Eggwing Ooze, 2 mana 1-2 summon extra copy of the minion at the end of the turn, but Pantry Spider is obviously worse than Eggwing Ooze. If your opponent play a 3-2 on turn 2, if you play Pantry Spider, it doesn't trade well against turn 2, uh, against a turn 2 play, against a 2 drop, so Pantry Spider is completely garbage. Next, we have Morrow's 3 mana 1 1 stealth. At the end of your turn, summon a 1 1 steward. Hmm, this card is completely garbage. We have a master at the end of the turn to 1 damage to this minion and summon a 1 1 imp. We're not seeing anyone playing the imp master. There are even demons. So there's some kind of edge with demon if you play Warlock. But nobody's playing in Master, and 
because a master is all one attacks, he cannot trade so well against a two drop. And think about Moros. If you play Moros on turn three, your opponent, especially Warrior, is going to play a Ravaging Ghoul. Well, your Moros is gonna die immediately with no value. It cannot trade to against anything. A 1-1 one, one token, it cannot stop aggro decks because aggro decks nowadays has, for example, a 3-4 a totem golem. You, you cannot trade against a you cannot trade well against the uh, tunnel truck. Like if you're against so you're gonna trade well against M Gang boss. So what are you gonna do? What what's what's happening to Moros? It's useless. This card is garbage. Next we have Barnes. 4 mana 3-4 three, 4, three, four. Battle Cry summon a 1-1 one, one copy of random minion in your deck. Well this card has some potential I believe. If you play this in the decks like Zolf Paladin, you have Tyrion Fordring, you have Karen Bloodhoof, you also have Sophanas, you have tons of Death Rattle minions. And if you if your Barnes manage to summon one copy of Tyrion Fordring, I think you almost immediately win the game because you get a 5-3 weapon in the next two or one or two turns. So that's that's something that's a big deal, right? If you get Karen Bloodhoof, you're gonna get an R four five after sacrificing the one one. So Barnes for the perfect case for Barnes is to summon Tyrion Fordring and Karen Bloodhoof or Savannahs. But what about the worst case? The worst case is that well, that's the worst case is summon nothing from your deck, right? But that's very unlikely. So we consider a case that summon a one-one copy of a random minion that does nothing. So how bad is this? Well, it turns out it's not too bad because you have a three mana three four and one token, one mana for one token. So. I don't think this is super bad that immediately lose you some lose you the game. I think it's still a te okayish tempo play. So we're gonna see Barnes do his, doing his job quite well in the coming meta. Next we have Arcano Smith, four man three two battle cry summon zero five minion with taunt. I immediately compare this with the Senjin Trail Master, which is four man three five taunt. So nowadays no one playing, no one is playing a Senjin Shield Master. But I think your opponent, if your opponent is playing a faster deck, and and to break through this Senjin Shield Master, he has to trade his smaller minions into the Senjin Shield Master. Whereas if you're playing, if you played the uh, Arcano Smith, he doesn't have to sacrifice his minion, right? Their minions kills your zero five. They're still alive. He may or may not trade something into 3 2. That's another story. But the big thing is, you didn't manage to reduce your opponent's tempo. So I think that's, that's the big deal. I don't think Arcano, Arcano Smith is good for the time being. It's strictly worse than Sentry Shield Master. Next, we have Prince Marshard 5 mana 5 6, which is a demon. It's an okay stat, but. When the game starts, add five extra legendary minions to your deck. Well, it makes it makes your deck worse. It puts in garbage legendary into your deck with 35 cards in the deck. You're less likely to draw good cards, less likely to draw on curve as well. So, who is going to play? Who is going to play this card? I think. <laughs> For those players who doesn't have much legendary, may want to play this card because they want to play some, try some fun legendary in games. But I, it's definitely, it's definitely not competitive. Next we have Managery Magician, five mana four four battle cry, give random, random beast dragon and murloc plus two plus two. Well, this is similar to the Zubat. I think I have already explained enough. And next we have Avian Watcher. 5 mana 3 6 battle cry if you control secret, gain plus 1 plus 1 taunt. So 
this is for secret car uh this is for secret class and uh you can compare this with Druid of Claw and Dark Arrow Core. If you trigger the Battle Cry, it's gonna be a 4 7, which is one health more than the Druid of Claw taunt form. Bear form, actually. And it's one attack less than the, than the Dark Arrow Core, which is 6 mana. So I would say this is somewhere between 5 or 6 mana. But the thing is, you have to control a secret. So if you're playing Control Mage, you, you put on the Ice Block and you play this. Well, how good is this? How good is a 4-7 Taunt? I would say at best, it, it's just like a Druid of Claw Taunt. But one thing you have to remember is Druid of the Claw has two forms. The first form is the Bear Form, which is the 4-6 Taunt. And the second form is the 4-4 Cat Form, Charge. So that you can kill a big threat minion such as Bran, you can kill a the Flame Waker. I don't think Avian Watcher has the same ability as the Druid of Claw, so I would say Avian Watcher is not that great. Molt Looker, six mana, three three battle cry, destroy a minion. Death Rattle, reach summon it. At first, I thought this card is insane. Uh, you can. It's a 3 mana 3-3 three, three plus a 3 mana assassinate, why not? And death rattle resummon it to my side? No, sorry, if you kill your opponent's Ragnaros, when this most looker dies, it's gonna summon the, the Ragnaros on your opponent's side. So yeah, I, I misread this card. But I still think there are some interesting combo which we might try, want to try it. Say, you have a Sylvanas, you play Sylvanas, next turn you can Molt Looker your Sylvanas so that later on when this Molt Looker dies, it's gonna resummon that Sylvanas. So, the value is great. Also, you can use, use this on Karen Bloodworth as well so that you can have an extra 4-5. Also, if you really like to kill your opponent's minion, you can use Molt Looker. Say, for example, you use it on, on your opponent's Ragnaros, and then later on, and then follow up with an Evolve. Then this Molt Looker is gonna turn into a 7-drop, a random 7-drop. Or you can use Master of Evolution, which I think it, is, it, it, it could be possible. In some control matchup, and this is going to be insane. Bookworm, 6 mana 3 6. Battle Cry, if you're holding a dragon, destroy an enemy minion with 3 attack or less. So that's. The Battle Cry is the same as the Shadow Ward Pain. And the 3 6 stat, it's about 4 mana, so you're put, paying 2 more mana for Shadow Ward Pain. And, uh. I would say that this card is kind of like the Cabal Shadow Priest as well. So Cabal Shadow Priest is a 6 mana for 5, take control of an enemy minion that has 2 and less attack. And if you're playing a dragon deck, most likely you have a dragon in your hand. So I think, um, especially when you're playing the Bookworm, you, you, aren't, you aren't going to play a plain 3-6 on the board without Battle Cry. And how good is this card? I think is largely determined by the meta. If people are playing Zoo like that, I think Bookworm is it's going to be good. As well as Cabal Shadow Priest, of, of course. I think for deck tag, you might want to play one Bookworm or or maybe two if a lot of people are playing Zoo. Other than that, the Bookworm itself is also a dragon, so it kind of help uh, triggering the battle cry effect for other dragons such as a Blackwing Corruptor, Twilight Guardian as well. So I think this 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 card is decent. Next we have the creator. Uh, 7 mana 4, 6 taunts, battle cry, draw a beast, dragon, and murdoch from your deck. You can compare this card with the Ancient of Lore, which is 7 mana 5, 5. Well, nobody is playing Ancient of Lore right now, 
but in the past, before Ancient Lore is nerfed, it used it to draw two cards. So if you you can draw two cards from the creator, if you can draw a beast or a dragon, two cards, just any cards, I think this card is gonna be very strong. Now, what kind of beast and dragon or murloc we can play? I think we can just play dragon and beast. So we can have Azure Drake and Stampede and Kodo uh, in our decks. Azure Drake is very popular, so it, it uh, there is no problem playing one. Uh, I mean, playing two in your deck. And you can also put in Stampede and Kodo. This is less common than Azure Drake, but I still find it's very useful from time uh, from time to time. Overall, I think there is a lot of potential with the creator. Next, we have Medivh the Guardian. 8 mana 7-7, seven, seven, Dark Cry Equip, Atesh, Great Staff of the Guardian. So, the staff is like this, Atesh, after you cast a spell, summon a random minion of that cost. This is one durability. You're not gonna attack with this most of the time. You want, really want to trigger the effect of this weapon. So, first of all, I think this card for 8 mana, I think it's a little bit too slow, though the value is going to be great. So with with that in mind, I think the deck that tries to you utilize this card will be something very controllish. Maybe mage, control mage. After playing Deep the Guardian, you can play Blizzard, which is AoE control board control. Flame Strike, Fireland Portal. And if you're playing Priest, you can play Mind Control and Tomb. So these are the cards, this these are the spells you can combo with the Medivh. Warrior is also a control class, but it is not it is not that great to use Medivh the Guardian because the highest cost spell in Warrior is Brawl. So maybe we shouldn't consider that because and Brawl, you, you want to play it in a very specific timing, so you're not going to play it just for triggering the uh, the staff. Next we have Arcane Giant, 12 mana, 8-8, eight, eight, cost 1 less for each spell you've cost this game. Well, this card I think, personally I think this is very strong, because most of the deck out there can play 10, 10 spells no problem. For those decks that is that uses Yawk can even play uh, 15 spells in the middle of the game. So I think Arcane Giant fits into those decks naturally. Yeah, I think it's very strong. So I'm very excited to see it uh, being played by Yawk Druid and Yawk Mage soon. <laughs>